What's up? How's it going? How are the kids? It's been a while. It has. It's been a while. Oh. I'm fine. Hello. Oh, hello, 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 hello. It has been an absolute while. I haven't been making a video like this in absolutely forever, but it's nice to be back. Uh, the YouTube hasn't really been active at all, but if you haven't seen on my Instagram, I said that I'd be doing some more videos, hopefully like fortnightly, but uh, that basically includes today. T today, I'm going to be talking about something. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about something that I hold near and dear to my heart, and that is films. The film industry is very changing, it's changing all the time, but this past 10 years it has probably changed the most. We've had the weirdest 10 years of film. We've had the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe, literally whole universe is expanding. It's completely different. What am I even talking about? Basically today I'm going to be talking about my favourite 10 films from the last decade. This decade was me growing up. I went from 8 years old all the way to... 17, isn't that? Wait, how? That makes no sense. I went from seven years old all the way to 17. Absolutely insane. That's bonkers in my head because I see 2010 like yesterday. 2012 felt like a couple hours ago. I was just at the Olympics watching the diving. It's so weird how time is going so fast and it's really scary. I'm actually having an existential crisis right now, but I should probably get back on topic. So I'm going to be talking about my favourite 10 films from the last 10 years. Yes, I, I nailed it. That's sick. Oh, if you don't agree with this, that's completely fine, but just know that your opinion is wrong. If you don't agree with me, that's completely fine. Just don't kill me. So starting off with number 10, I'm gonna have American Animals. This film is absolutely insane. It's fairly new. Don't look into lights, okay? Physically it hurts. So American Animals is a documentary sh short film. No, it's not a short film, Max. It's a, it's a feature length. Fairly indie. It's, it has quite a low budget. This film, is incredible, it's absolutely insane. So it's a true story about a robbery uh, of a library where they steal the most expensive book in American history. Uh, it's a true story and they actually have the people who've done it in the film, they're in it. Like they talk about the experience. It's really weird, it's it's like a hybrid. So these, so it's like a documentary and then it goes into like the feature action heist film. But you just have to watch it really. It merges the two genres together in such a way that it's so interesting because you see it from uh, different people's point of views. And am I in focus? No! I swear to god I'm going to hurt someone. So you see it almost from their point of view, it's so interesting. Go watch it, you might have not heard about it, it came out last year. I was lucky enough to see it in cinema. Um, so yeah, American Animals, put it, put it on your watch list. Moving on to uh, my uh, ninth favourite film of the last 10 years, and that is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. So this film was made by Edgar Wright, it's based off seven now? I think seven books. It's just incredible. If you love Michael Cera, um, then this is this is the film for you, but just from the effects uh, to the story, it's just incredible. Like the little, it's the small things, okay? It's the small things in it. Look out for the numbers and it will blow your mind. Cinema Sins did like two episodes of it because there's so much to unpacking it. It's just incredible. Like the opening sequence will have you hooked for the rest of the film. It, the aesthetic of it is just incredible. Like, it's just interesting. It's so good and the amount of stars in it. You have Brie Larson, you have Brie, Brie Larson, you have Michael Sarah, Orby Plaza, Chris Evans is it. Freaking Captain America. What, what, what more do you want? My eighth favourite film was The Disaster Artist. The so Disaster Artist is a biography about the Lord and Saviour, Tommy Wiseau. Hi, this is Tommy Wiseau, creator of The Room. Let me introduce you to the new Joker. If you don't know, Tommy Wiseau is a filmmaker and he created the film The Room. Oh, hi, Mark. Just, you read into it and it's crazy. So it was all funded by him. They filmed it on digital and film for some reason. He bought all the equipment rather than renting it out. Uh, <laughs> he plays the lead part in the film. 
it just blows my mind. And this film is about the making of The Room. And the two leads in it are played by both the Franco brothers. And you have people like Seth Rogen and Zac Efron's in it as well. If you're, if you're a fan of uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen comedies, and this is this is the film for you. Like, it's not just funny, it's just an incredible film about a really interesting topic. Moving on, number six is The Wolf of Wall Street. So, uh, this really, really long film is made by a, a brilliant director, Martin Scorsese. If you don't know him, then what are you doing? This film, again, is a true story. I think it's, his name's Jordan Bel Belford. Jordan Bel... Jordan Bel... Bel... Jordan. It's about Jordan. It's about it. if you don't. I'm surprised. How am I trying to describe the plot? You probably have seen it. It's just an incredible film. It's on the list um, because I, I quite like Scorsese, but to as I'm more of a Spielberg guy myself. But this film just just blows my mind about like the script writing to the acting. Like brilliant performances from like Margot Robbie, Leonardo DiCaprio, obviously. Personally, I think he deserved the Oscar for this film, but I guess. Um, Guess that they just don't give them out like that, but okay. I started watching it when I was younger and my parents got mad at me because it was an 18. So I watched it like a year later and I finished it off and I'm so glad I did because it's just a whirlwind of just everything. <laughs> Number five on the list is uh, La La Land. So this film, directed by Damon Chazelle, I'm actually studying it at the moment, so I feel like I'm, I've, I've like said this about a thousand times, like the reasons why I like it, but I'll say it again, it's not going to hurt anyone, I hope it doesn't hurt anyone. So La La Land is a really brilliant film, it's a musical, I believe it's the only musical on the list, and it's made by one of my favourite directors, Damon Chazelle, he actually won the Oscar for this, making him the youngest director ever to win the Oscar before myself, Malifat. Oh, and this this film just ticks all the boxes for me. I've watched it about 17,000 times and it never gets old. Just everything, the dance sequences are brilliant. Um, that end sequence is brilliant, but it will just leaves you feeling just, just, ah, oh, that hurts my emotions. <laughs> Overall, oh, I think it's a brilliant film, especially if you're with a very special someone, <laughs> your mum. So now we're getting down to the business end of the list and starting off, we have number four, no, not start. With number four, we have another Damien Chazelle movie, and this is Whiplash. Whiplash is incredible. It started out as a short film. It's on VMO. It, you can tell it's low budget, but it will blow your mind. It seems like a true story. It isn't a true story. I believe it's not. I think it might be based on a true story, but it's about a drummer and just his experience going to like like a musical university. It's like scary, but J.K. Simmons is incredible. He delivers one of the best performances I've ever seen throughout the, all of cinema. And it, it's scary, and you, you hate him, and it's brilliant. I think I watched it twice in the first day when I saw it. Just does it for me. It does it, and it, it deserves so much more than it got. And I um, can talk all day about it, but the, the ending, the ending just, just, just ugh. It leaves it up to you to decide, and you'll get what that means. If you watch it, and you should watch it, I'm gonna make you watch it. We have number three, and that is Baby Driver, another uh, Edgar Wright film on here. And this film, if you haven't seen it, just blows my mind every single time. I've watched it 700 times. It's really unhealthy that I've watched it that many times. But every time I watch it, I notice something completely new. There we go. There we go. Just uh, the, the, the sequences in it, the opening sequence of the car, it's genius. It's genius. <laughs> Literally, it's one, probably one of the films that made me want to take film studies and pursue a career in film. And I, I just have Edgar Wright to thank for this masterpiece. Even if some people say it's overrated, I don't care. You're overrated. So that's why it's number three on the top ten films of the last ten years. Going down to uh, the penultimate spot. This is um, Skyfall. So Skyfall comes in at number two for multiple reasons. Sam Mendes. Number two, Daniel Craig. Number three, 007. This film just does it. It just completes everything I want to see in a Bond film. Action, drama, different countries, brilliant fight sequences. Judy Dench, just lovely, lovely person. I really want to meet her one day. But no, Skyfall just, just, I don't even have to describe that I like it. It's such a, um, such an iconic film that I'll remember forever my experience watching it. It's the final one. We're here, finally. So, number one, my favourite film over the last ten years is... Get Out. Get Out. The door's there. 
Get Out. I'm joking. Get Out is an absolutely amazing film. So directed by Jordan Peele. <laughs> it's a horror movie. You should know it. You've probably seen the poster. It ticks every single box of it. I'd happily say it's one of the best films I've ever seen. The directorial debut of Jordan Peele. Perfect. It's the perfect film. It has unbelievable amounts of foreshadowing and it's just speech such a good message it's funny it's scary it does everything that a horror movie should do everything a good movie should do it i love it so much and i was lucky enough to see it on a big screen i know a lot of my friends like it as well it's one of those ones that you just want to get loads of mates around and uh watch it because when i watched it people were cheering it on people were getting really involved in it and that's what it should be that's why i believe cinema should be staying around it's those type of experiences that that I really like, I really get the feel for the room. It's like going to Star Wars on opening night. That's why cinema should keep going. Sorry, I just want a bit of a sidetrack. Oh, let's get back on to the topic. But no, get out. No, no words are needed. I'm just going to leave it at that because it, it, you don't need to say anything about it. It's incredible. And if you haven't seen it, then you should stop watching this and start watching it. What are you doing? Watch the So that about does it for today. Thank you for watching. Um, this is a very strange video for me as I haven't been making a video like this for absolutely ages but I thought I'd start again because um, I enjoy it and I wanted something else to edit other than films and other stuff and vlogs. So hopefully you enjoyed and uh, as I said I do have some films coming out um, so throughout January, throughout February hopefully. Uh, let's see how long I can get it going. Every fortnight I want to do a video almost like this and maybe post some more films and stuff. But I do have a documentary coming out. Um, I think I already had a film come up with Natural Selection. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. Um, 2020, Year of the Roach. Let's, uh, let's make it the best year ever. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, have a good...